Yeah, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for having invited me to give here a speech. So it's looking ahead, so it's about joining us on the journey to the digital enterprise. Um, you may be surprised that Siemens uh, is in the glass industry for quite a long time, and I'm working with the glass industry also for nine years now that I'm with Siemens, and I was always amazed on how, uh, what a closed and family-like community it is. Um, Friedrich Siemens, this is not Werner von Siemens, it's his brother. So Werner, the founder of Siemens company is uh, Werner, and his brother, he invented the re regenerative f glass furnace, uh, 163 years ago, um, so he could achieve high temperatures by preheating the gases and the air, and that basically then also made him uh, one of the largest or the largest uh, gla glass manufacturer uh, in Europe for a while. And um, yeah, so this is uh, the starting point from also a industry group that we have in Siemens. Uh, so I'm, my expertise is with process automation, but we have industry groups focusing on the particular demands of industries. So, um, yeah, we are close to the next. Uh, so that basically uh, the regenerative furnace was the uh, uh, revolution to the glass industry 160 years ago. And now, uh, 163 years later, we are basically again in front of a revolution, the industry 4.0, or in other, there's other names for it, industrial IT, industrial IIoT. And uh, that brings us right into the topic here. So I'm guiding you to uh, through the uh, th steps on how to convert or yeah basically that how how do you, does your company become an industry 4.0 company or a digital enterprise also this term is well known so what is a digital enterprise a digital enterprise uh, from our understanding is a totally paperless um, end to end manufacturing from order entry to shipment without anyone any need to touch it that a human being needs to touch it so you get your orders digitally you produce you ship it out and basically no human interaction involved if all goes well will that be a manless company no i don't think so because um, there will always be upsets or unusual situations where somebody needs to interact, uh, pieces get stuck in a machine or so, and I don't think that we will have repair robots so soon that uh, they can change or take out parts and, and look if they're still good. Or so. so it will not be a manless uh, operation, but if all goes well, yes, you can receive orders and uh, produce and ship them without any involvement. So what are the, the driving uh, factors, questions and challenges? I will guide you also through the prerequisites, what is needed to become an industry 4.0 or digital enterprise. Um, we will be developing a digitalization strategy, and I will give you examples, uh, three of them, so because that's the most exciting. So there's a theory part, and there is three examples to it. One is um, Stiglana Rosnik. He is a glass manufacturer, and we also have, I have two examples from um, glass processors. Uh, or uh, no, no, there's a, and sorry, uh, there's a machine builder, Grenzebach, so they are many, they're, uh, producing glass processing machines and also a glass processing company, finally, that is applying all this uh, from Freiris Glass. So let's get um, started here. So here are the key drivers, and I just let you read this. Um, so not much to say about this. These are very generic, not specific to glass industries, but um, yeah, that's basically like for everyone. Um, let me point one out, central data access and data analysis. That is um, a point that uh, is, um, yeah, uh, is key, kind of key, because um, you may want to start my timer if you like. So. <laughs> um, otherwise, I won't stop. <laughs> then uh, we, we see many, uh, in our experience, many data silos, and um, uh, there is a lot uh, of data collected, and there is also attributes missing. So I will go into this. 
um, because uh, ac data access, data analysis is uh, is key, and uh, some there is some some important issue things to to it. Mindset and culture change is also. Uh, key, so we need, uh, and all the three examples that we I'll show you started from management level of those companies involved, so that is uh, also important. So uh, and, uh, one prerequisite is basically electrification and automation. Why is that? Um, uh, electrification we don't need to talk about, but automation basically holds most of the data that are of interest. So we need to connect them to our ERP systems, of course. Um, but that is where you get your data from when it comes to optimizing your production and the uh, production processes and the workflows with it. This is where we get it from. And your automation also includes communication. So you need to have your network in place. Uh, that is, uh, is key so, so that data are accessible and also get across um, yeah, um, boundaries that you might have also in your, organ in your organizations. Um, yeah, these are the, um, this was kind of technical prerequisites. Here are all the social re pre prerequisites. Uh, Foresight, I said it already, it starts with management attention and man management involvement, engagement. They need, to, they need to like it, they need to want it. They um, have to implement this also yeah, with, with foresight. You wanna be, where, where do you want to be in five or ten years from now? So this is how everything starts. Investment. Uh, sense, I don't need to explain this, uh, everybody uh, has it and at the end of our uh, journey is also usually you get a report when we do a consulting here um, with in, 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 indeed for the most important points in ROI, cal ROI calculation because everybody wants to know what is, what do I need to do, what is the cost associated, what do I get, you know, what is my benefit with it. Uh, number three, most important expertise, build teams, uh, so if you want to go to a uh, digital enterprise, you need to create your own teams and uh, collect the expertise in your house because all the knowledge, and we found it's uh, very p particular to every company, there is no one size fits all. You know, the knowledge is in your company. We also at Siemens have the saying, if Siemens knew what Siemens knows, uh, so then we would also be a lot better, could, could, e could be even better. Yeah? <laughs> and, um, uh, we also, and expertise means that we need a team with um, basically covering the entire value chain from order intake, production planning, scheduling, production, and shipping. We need all these people on board that are affected because they all have their particular pain points. They have their sometimes showstoppers and they know uh, what could be better, but very often we see that they, even internal projects are not revealing these uh, synergies or the, the, the know-how. We need them um, to talk and identify the spots of uh, where to start. Yeah, corporate culture. Yeah, here's an interesting aspect to it. Um, establish uh, also an error culture. There is a little bit of try and error here, so you need to allow for errors. Yeah, some things, some ideas may sound good to begin with, but um, may not turn out to give the results desired. Um, that was also a new thing when I joined, uh, when I, Joe Kesa became CEO of Siemens, that he encouraged for experimental things that, and allowed for errors. So that's uh, something you also need to have in your culture. People, yeah, basically I touched on this. And of course, a partner. So don't hesitate to bring external consultants on board. And the ideal uh, partner for this is somebody who ha brings in cross um, industry knowledge, who has automation expertise, IT expertise, and um, a process know-how, uh, so understands uh, the process. So if you come to, to us, uh, we, we have at least two, two guys on the team, an IT guy, and usually we have people like me who know the industry and are familiar with automation. So that is the minimum re uh, required, and then you will get at the end a, um, of the consulting a report uh, vendor neutral, so that allows you to uh, basically uh, go out for quota, uh, ask for bids, and that is not biased, uh, and so that is basically what, what you need to uh, reach out for partners. So that is the systematic, if you 
were to do it with Siemens, we start off with a kick-off assessment. That's an individual consulting. Uh, as I said, interdisciplinary team, so the entire value chain needs to be present in that team. And that basically, uh, we define your business goals, we write them down, what is important, we ask questions like, why are customers buying from you? Sometimes uh, we get interesting answers. Um, so when we have those business um, goals uh, identified, we go into workshops, usually this is two in a row, to um, have an, um, basically uh, yeah, a, um, a review on what's installed, so what's... Um, what are the internal processes? How are the companies operating? What is their existing IT, OT infrastructure? And yeah, then usually we also get the first ideas that identify room for improvement. Um, it continues then when we have this. Uh, usually this is like uh, two times two days. With the digitalization consulting, we always need a bit of time in between to prepare for the next step. So this is really a sequence in here. And um, so we do a digitalization roadmap, an action plan, timetable, and uh, for at the end there is a prioritization. So when we have all the measures, the ideas together, we prioritize them in a way that we look at what is their business impact and what is their um, cost or effort to implement it. So that's a, a matrix basically and on the high end when you have low effort but high impact that's the one that the measure said yeah, that you want to implement first. Um, for those we do also an ROI calculation so that you know what the cost is and what the benefits uh, are expected to be. <coughs> okay so that's uh, I think enough theory. Let's uh, jump in with the first example here. So this is a glass manufacturer, Seglana Rosnik, um, that is a Slo Slo Slovakian company producing uh, specialty bottles, uh, really expensive. So for uh, good, good in, for, when the interior needs some uh, representation also. Um, bottle is about 30 euros, so you can imagine that there is not water in then <laughs> there later. Um, and yeah, let's just see um, what we did here. Can you stop it? All right. Um, for the sake of time, I shorten this here. Um, we are currently implementing the, uh, the measures that we identified, and uh, Steklana Rasnik ex is, is expecting a, an increase of production capacities, shortened production times, and with that also some e energy savings going along. This are the points that we identified. Again, it's production here, glass production. And also they see themselves being able to respond quicker to special requests. And that is what they basically, what, the, what they live from. They are a specialty manufacturer here. And so they need quick response times. And they feel they can achieve this by implementing the measures identified. Next example is, um, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, the next example basically I want to show is um, a look at uh, a machine manufacturer, what we call OEM. So this is a stacker here basically uh, that is bringing uh, from the cold end the glass, this is flat glass, uh, taking from the cold end, putting it on, uh, on, on stacks. And um, 
Here is a different example and a different understanding of digitalization. So this is basically a planning, what they, they designed this machine. We were using their 3D data, added some kinematics with it, and uh, could make a simulation. That's what we call the digital the twin. So we could have all the mechanical collision de detection. We could identify the uh, torques and other mechanical data by simulation. Uh, we could even switch between there is C-motion uh, drives, uh, so C-motion is in here. We could uh, connect the simulation with our hardware and pre-test it, which was very important because otherwise you would have to build a prototype, another prototype, another prototype. It was really helping here to come up, yeah, basically the first machine that was built had all the improvements that usually are uh, expensive to derive to, uh, from prototypes that was all in. And when you see here the switch in the middle, that allows also we have the simulation of dynamics. Uh, we could do it as a software or we could do it as hardware. Hardware has the advantage you can pre-configure and load it and, and uh, take it as it is and, and use it in your machines. So there were also uh, improvements that they could identify. Um, for example, a um, difficulty is uh, when you put uh, sheets on a stack, yeah, with, with every uh, sheet that you add, you lose, uh, you shorten the way, yeah, basically, and th that has to be done with collision detection. You need to slow down earlier to not hit the other um, uh, sheets on, on the stack. Uh, that is one of the um, mechanical uh, things. And they increased their capacity. Uh, the previous model, uh, by compared to the previous model, they have 30% more capacity now. Uh, it, it works a lot faster. So that is a big improvement, 30% more uh, sta sheets per second. Uh, that that uh, No, it's it's 30% more. It's now 30 seat sheets per second. It's the twice with the 30%, <laughs> 30 and 30%. So that, that was uh, what, what we could achieve here. Uh, commissioning, pre-commissioning can be done on the digital twin. So also here, a lot of advantages. And uh, that is basically uh, the second example that I wanted to show when, uh, when we deal with machine suppliers and impl implement a digital twin in their development and commissioning process. Um, the last um, example. Let me skip that here, even though it has some nice animations, but I only have nine minutes left. Um, we look at the last example. This is a um, glass processing company. So what they get is they buy the jumbo sheets, cut it in pieces, they put coatings on, they uh, put ni cut it nice shapes, they make holes in it. And that was a project that I was also personally involved with when we did the, fir the, the initial talks here. And basically, uh, they had a lot of um, data silos, so production uh, order process, order income, or so, so order registration. Let me put it this way: uh, proceeding to orders, and and like the, there was a lot of disconnect between uh, systems that they had in house, uh, duplicate data, inconsistent, uh, um, also in house logistic problems. They. They, ha they didn't know where their sheets are, so then, and um, for example, when, when they started an order and uh, uh, they have like five uh, machines that, um, uh, different machines and also different vendors uh, where they, um, they, they are not arranged in a line. They basically manually need to move sheets from one machine to the other. Uh, in order to, uh, one needs to get drilled, one other not, then the edges need to be grinded here, uh, and not every, not every sheet goes through the same process, not every sheet is coded or a mirror coding is attached, wh whatever they, so they do a lot of things. So they have individual courses and uh, this is all done manually, resulting also in not knowing where sheets uh, are. When you want to complete an order, say I need it now, and uh, so uh, it's difficult to push, push, pull that ahead. Uh, maybe you if lose money even because sometimes uh, when you ship fast, uh, then uh, the customer is ready to pay more money. So that is lost opportunities. <coughs> so we helped them here um, and did also a um, a consulting that uh, resulted in, in steps uh, on how to improve their IT uh, infrastructure, for example, or also the internal processes. Um, as I said, uh, when Industry 4.0 is achieved, you want to have a 
non unmanned uh, um, production from order intake from order receive receiving orders to basically shipping um, so they have infrastructure they look at uh, battery operated uh, dri drivers uh, and, and as a vision basically also of uh, when we look at industry 4.0 there is a lot of aut autonomy in, in machines and also we had new ideas here in for example saying okay let let a um, a sheet know what needs to be done and then find yourself find yourself through the machines of uh, processing so that basically when i'm when i start f with grinding edges then i have an rfid attached that stores that okay grinding was done and the next step so it it's, uh, is for example <coughs> drilling then I call a, a, a transporter and it takes me to the next drilling machine that's available. I get in line in the, in the shortest line. So there is a lot of autonomy uh, as a vision so that the, uh, the, the glass pieces uh, make their way on their own through the, through the manufacturing process. And uh, I also we found an interesting thing here, the question, where do you store data? I said there is an RFID on it that can be trained and learn what was done. It can have the instructions what needs to be done on board, and it can be reprogrammed so that uh, it, you can basically check what was done. Yeah. And that is also uh, important if you store that centrally. We always struggle with where is data stored, centrally, or do you want to have it decentral? This company once experienced a um, shutdown of their ERP system and uh, their production tracking system. So they didn't know. One of the steps is, for example, a ESG oven, a furnace at the end to make it safety glass, single single sheet safety glass. And so they uh, they didn't know at the end. Uh, they had a shutdown. They they didn't know which sheets were already in the furnace and which not. And you cannot do it twice because the second time, if you put it in a second time, it will break. Yeah. <clears throat> So this is why it's, it could be a good idea to store the data really on the, on the sheets by RFID that even if you have a greater uh, disaster here that, it, uh, that you have du at least duplicate or a redundant uh, information in here so that you can re re recreate or reproduce what was done. So these are interesting findings or experiences we had with uh, Frerichs glass. So that's a typical, that's their warehouse where they receive their jumbo sheets and store them. Here's a cutting machine. And again, they are not connected as a line. There is manual transfers needed from one to the other machine. And Good. Uh, a last topic I wanted to slightly touch on is uh, apps. Everybody is talking apps. Um, so that needs two things. That needs uh, data storage. Uh, that needs some knowledge on how, what do you want to do with the data that you have. And um, also here with view on the, the last example, the Frerichs glass, we found that many data is not usable. I think you mentioned that too in my, your previous presentation. Because data is not just data. What you get from a PLC is usually a time a, a value, maybe a temperature with a timestamp. And that's not enough. We wanted to make investigations, for example, um, analysis is by orders. You know, what is the cost and or the energy associated with an order? And we couldn't make that connection because there was no order information. The order number you know, was not attached to the to, to to the data. You may say, oh, we have the timestamp. Maybe we, we can reverse uh, calculate uh, what to, what it was. But it's not. If there are several uh, orders processed in parallel, you cannot identify it clearly by timestamp. So um, that is then the question, where is data, data hold? You need to identify, really, you, you need to make sure that you know what you want to anal analyze to have all the attributes to your data ready. And attributes is you know, value, timestamp, 
and probably other uh, data and maybe more. That depends on really what you want to do with the data. <coughs> then we say, okay, Siemens has MindSphere and uh, that can host apps. Um, you will not find a lot of apps from Siemens because we figured that is uh, really a very, usually the uh, digitalization is very individual to every company. So that's why we offer you a toolkit that you can develop your apps with so-called low code. Yeah, low code. So we bought Mendix. Low code is something that really you just move boxes. You don't know, need to know need to have any programming know-how. Everybody can basically develop apps, and so then you can do it yourself. Uh, let me finish up with a dilemma that will persist probably. What we see is uh, also other so OEMs offering cloud solutions, uh, like uh, we see it with Grenzebach. They, so they say, I need your data in my cloud, then I can make my services, uh, I can schedule my services around it, I can, tell, I can let you know when uh, maintenance and repair is, uh, is due, and can, I can even offer you new business models. Yeah, I can make a pay-per-use instead of you buy the machine. You, I, I give you the machine and, and you pay-per-use. These things are new ideas also that are possible with, with the digitalization. Um, However, um, they, so if you store now, uh, if you are the end user and you have like Frederick's glass, like five manu uh, machines from five manufacturers, and everybody wants them to put, wants you to put data on his cloud, um, then you are losing the possibility to analyze them to optimize your workflow. Yeah, and. Um, that has shut down here, uh, so, so over. Okay, and uh, up time is up. So you analyze your workflow, and vice versa. If uh, you, as uh, the, the end user, Freris Glass says, I put, uh, I put up a uh, account on, let's say, MindSphere, and I put all the data on MindSphere so I can do my analysis for workflow optimization, and I let you, as an OEM, look into your data. You also don't have it in one place. You may have to collect your data from your end users from various clouds, and most apps cannot operate across clouds today. So there is a dilemma which will persist, but that's just uh, the finishing statement here for my digitalization journey that I would like to summarize yeah. um, with the main focus on the consultant, uh, on the consulting, find uh, your um, sweet spots uh, where, you find, where you have immediate impact with little effort, and we help you with that, uh, with the systematic that I introduced. Thanks for listening for now. I'm not sure if you have time for questions. Any questions? Awesome. Well, thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Hi there. Did you like what you just saw? If you did, why don't you like the video? Drop us a comment below and share the video as well, since GPD is all about sharing. And to receive more videos in future, subscribe to this channel and don't forget to click the bell icon. Ciao.